the voice of the Villanova Wildcats. Ryan Fannin joins me here on 97.3 ESPN. Coverage tonight starts at 7.30, Ryan. At some point during that game, were you just amazed at what you were seeing? I mean, everything was falling. Yeah, it was one of those games that it was just surreal. I don't think it hit me till about an hour after the game of what I just broadcast over the last few hours. I think maybe the moment when it really hit me was when Spangler hit a layup with under 11 minutes to go to cut the deficit to 13, and then Villanova scored 25 consecutive points to go up 38. I was like, are you kidding me? At that moment, okay, the game's 17-16, Ryan. At one point, 12 and a half minutes left. It's 17-16. They go on that 21-4 to run. Uh, it, it never seemed like Oklahoma was really going to get back in that game. At that moment, uh, were you a little surprised uh, that Oklahoma never made another real legitimate run? I, another key point in the game was, you know, right at the beginning of the second half, Oklahoma was just getting all over the glass. And they made a little mini run there. It was a 9-4 to four run to start the second half. Like you said, it wasn't a true run, but it was enough to get them back in the game at 46-37 at the 16-20 mark. And then it was just one of those things where Villanova, I think really the their ability to take Oklahoma out of any rhythm the whole game, I think, started to wear on them. And you often see this with teams. If they're not making shots and they're frustrated offensively, it can hurt them on the other end. And I think it just kicked in. And, and Oklahoma just, uh, in the end, you know, they're an unbelievable team. But by the end of that game, you know, Villanova had just broke them in every way. No doubt about it. Uh, Ryan Fannin's in Houston. He'll call the game tonight. Villanova, North Carolina. You know, I thought, watching the game from where I was, the defensive um, strategy that Jay Wright put in really uh, was a big key in that game. I mean, they were running different guys all over the place, but it seemed like they weren't giving Oklahoma the same look any time down the floor. And, and I don't know, I mean, you're there all year long. Is that something that's typical of the way uh, they play defense, or was that something they decided to throw at Oklahoma because of Buddy Heald? Well, I think a couple things. I think Villanova switches screens exceptionally well. And I think that the emergence of Mikel Bridges, the redshirt freshman for the Wildcats, I mean, his minutes have just gone up in a huge way in the last month. I mean, his length at 6'7", 191 pounds, the redshirt freshman out of Malvern, Pennsylvania, he's just terrific because you bring him in, when you take Brunson out, you bring him in, Villanova's got a lot of size and a lot of athleticism on the perimeter defending the three-point shot with Bridges. And we know Arts. I mean, he's just got the heart of a lion. So he's not the athlete of Bridges or Hart. But, I mean, that guy is the most focused kid I've ever seen in my life um, on and off the court to win games. And I think when you combine Arts and Hart and Bridges, I mean, and then Phil Booth is a very underrated defender that comes off the bench. He might arguably be our best on-ball defender. Villanova just brings perimeter pressure and waves at you. All right, so that's interesting because they bring the uh, perimeter pressure. North Carolina, 50 points in the paint the other night. So how do you see this defensive matchup? Well, I think, first of all, when I think of Carolina, I always think about the way they kill teams in transition. I think transition defense is going to be the biggest factor in this game. Off makes or misses, how Villanova gets back, they don't allow Carolina to just thrive in transition. That, to me, stands out more than anything. And then team rebounding tonight has to be at the greatest level all season long. And Ochefu and Hart have to have to stay out of foul trouble in this game. When you look at the nine-man rotation of North Carolina, they bring 6'8", 6'10", 6'10", 6'9", 6'8", 6'11", at you. I mean, it is so much on the inside that if you give them a ton of second-chance opportunities, you know, they'll just make you pay in a way that's going to be hard to beat them. But I think that in the end, you know Carolina is going to have those opportunities because that's the way they are. But what Villanova's got to do, I think, is outscore Carolina from the three-point line by a considerable margin. Maybe Villanova makes nine or ten threes, and Carolina only makes 
five or six threes. I think there's got to be a disparity there of at least 12 points from beyond the arc tonight in the Cats' favor. Bryce Johnson, 6'9", he's a big guy. Uh, maybe a lottery pick as well. Um, Kennedy Meeks, Isaiah Hicks, very talented front line. A lot of that will fall to uh, Daniel Ochefu. How do they match up with the front line when they go with the four-guard lineup? Well, I think that's the thing. When you look at the fact that both sides, I mean, you know, as I watch Carolina, I'm watching film of them right now from their game against Syracuse on Saturday, and they don't react defensively as quickly as you would think. So they're going to have a lot of challenges chasing out on the perimeter shooters of Villanova, which will end up actually giving Ochefu some one-on-one opportunities in the low blocks on the offensive end, and he's got to be aggressive when he gets the ball in the low blocks. You know, I didn't think Daniel Ochefu had to be great in the NCAA tournament for Villanova to, to advance, but he needs to be solid and consistent. And I look at his numbers so far in this NCAA tournament, and he's done exactly what Villanova is needed for him in terms of overall in the five games of the tournament, Ochefu is averaging 12 points, seven and a half rebounds, almost three assists, shooting 68% and 80% from the line. He's delivering exactly what they needed out of their five man to make this great run. Ryan Fannin's with us, the voice of the Villanova Wildcats. In Houston tonight, it'll be Nova and UNC. You know, and that's interesting because Villanova, I think, uh, has had a more impressive run in terms of beating uh, Miami, Kansas, and Oklahoma three really good teams. That's not to say that Indiana, Notre Dame, and Syracuse stink, uh, but I think their run has been more – it's incredible to say, more impressive. They're winning by almost 25 points a game. Uh, you wonder, does the team staying very even-keeled? Is there a concern that they've shot themselves out at all? No, I mean, I, first of all, you're totally right. I mean, look who Villanova's beaten in this tournament. They beat a seven-seed Iowa. They beat a three-seed Miami. They beat the overall number one seed in Kansas. They beat a two seed in Oklahoma. Carolina, the highest seeded team that they've beaten this tournament so far, is five seed Indiana. So they haven't nearly beaten the teams that Villanova's beaten on this run. But here's what I think. When you look at the three blowout wins that Villanova had against UNC Asheville, Iowa, and Miami, and then Villanova was able to beat Kansas by shooting only 40%, making only four threes, but they held Kansas to 59 points. Their defense was stifling. And at that moment, I was truly – I mean, I knew coming to the tournament we had a shot to win this whole thing. But when we beat Kansas that way, my confidence and I think the team, the people that follow this program closely said, oh, my goodness. Villanova can beat a team like Kansas by giving you the numbers I just gave you. This team can absolutely win a national championship. Ryan, do you like the offensive matchups for Villanova? The way they've shot, and we just talked about, they'll go with the four guards. Villanova, I mean, North Carolina is a little bigger. They, uh, you know, want to score in the paint. So is this a night where Villanova should get good looks? I I think so. I mean, I I think Carolina is a solid defensive team. But I don't think that they're a, a lockdown defense. I think Kansas is a better defensive team than North Carolina. I think Villanova will get shots tonight. And I think at the end of the day, you know, Jenkins has been that guy. We talked about this before. When his game went to the next level in mid-January, and instead of just really being a three-point shooter, he became a mid-range guy and a more confident shooter from three and a more vocal leader and even backing guys down with his good size in terms of weight at 240, even though he's a little undersized four-man at 6'6", he changed things. But to think that we are going to beat a program and a team like North Carolina that's got all this offensive firepower without Jenkins being solid tonight, I don't think that's a fair statement. Jenkins has got to stay red hot for us, I think, to finish this thing off. And to go through a program like Carolina that's gone to more Final Fours than any team in the history of college basketball I mean, this is the perfect scenario. I said to somebody the other day, there's only one team I'd rather beat ever to win a national championship, and it was Georgetown. And Villanova did that in 1985. But, you know, it's not UCLA of old. So if I had to pick one team in America to beat, to say this is as great as it gets, I'd take Carolina. And here they are tonight, a chance to beat North Carolina to win 35 games 
put this in perspective. The 85 championship team won 25. Hmm. This team would have won 10 more than the 85 team. And they would go down in almost the 100-year history of Villanova, in my opinion, unequivocally the greatest team in Villanova history by a landslide if they can win this game tonight. Uh, Villanova, North Carolina face off 9-19. The Tar Heels are looking for their sixth national championship, which would break a tie with Duke and Indiana for sole possession of third all-time. And Villanova looks for its second. It's a 31-year span, the second longest uh, challenge for them if uh, they get it tonight uh, behind Kansas, which took 36 years between championships. Nova hopes to get that tonight. Ryan and the guys will have the call live in Houston. Ryan, thank you so much, pal. Great being with you. Bring on the Tar Heels. Let's get it done.